All right, everyone, I'm uh, cutting in here. Um, just going to let you know that uh, Brian McLaughlin is the winner of the treasure hunt. And uh, here's the, uh, there's the address right there. There's, or there was the amount, and there is the QR code um, to show that address. And as you see there, there's the withdrawal. And so Brian did figure out the code. And just to show you the, uh, the private key here, let me show you what it was. This was it right here. If you want to go ahead and scan it, this was the private key that's password protected. And if you didn't know what the password was, um, let me see. Um, well, I think you had to go to one of the previous episodes, I think 007. Anyways, um, right here in this particular episode, uh, Brian basically tells you how he came up with the how he came up with the the last passcode uh, to, to come up with the complete passcode. And um, if you didn't know already, let me uh, let me see here. Uh, let me go here real quick. I'll show you which episode to to look at. 007. Okay, yes. So it was this one, 007. That was the episode in which I did the treasure hunt. And so, if you want to know what the uh, what the treasure hunt was. I will show you the passcode so you know that it was it was done as it you know he won it fairly because he figured it out I'll show you the passcode that's what it was so um, I think Brian said 1.44 Luke was the one that said 824 I said James Bond and then the past the last part the 007 uh, double capital zero uh, capital O capital O uppercase O uppercase O the letter O seven and if you watched uh, the video um, you'll see how Brian figured that figured out the passcode and uh, hold on here let me pause here and anyway there 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 it is one more time if you want to verify uh, let me let me pause it right here and, and show you what I'm talking about. All right. If you watch the previous episode or um, uh, James Bond uh, Bitcoin Live 009, uh, I was going to give out the passcode, but Brian McLaughlin already won. If you do a Google search on "license to kill" in uh, Wikipedia, here it shows up "license to kill" concept. That was the clue I was going to give. And if you see here. see here talks about license to kill but more specifically right here as you see right here I'm gonna highlight it so right here as it says this is where it is signified by the double O, and if you look here, double zero, uh, double O designation given to the agent in the series who are licensed to kill. James Bond himself is famously Agent 007. So the double O is actually uh, the actual double O. And if you look, do some further further research into Ian Fleming, you'll notice that he never put double zero. He put double O. So that's why the hence the name double O seven. So that is a concept of what double O means. It means license to kill. So that's part of the clue. And anyways, just wanted to share that with you. And again, uh, if you wanted to verify, uh, there you go. Here is the QR code with the passcode. And so uh, hopefully in the next uh, treasure hunt, that will give you some ideas. And again, Brian McLaughlin is the winner. And this was worth, uh, it was originally $70, but the price of Bitcoin went up to uh, almost $80 at, the, at, current, at this current price. And so if you want to verify one more time, 
there you go. Anyways, let me cut out and head to the uh, to the rest of the video. Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, in this episode here, what I'm gonna do uh, this is a uh, Bitcoin product review. Um, it's a the Coinami wallet. Uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to let me see here uh, overview. Okay, so basically. I've had some people donate some coins to me. Uh, Brian McLaughlin donated uh, this much Doge to me. And there's the QR code over here for this that he sent to, just to show you. And in case anybody wants to send me any more Doge, I'd be more than happy to experiment here. So in this particular, I'm just going to focus on Doge. Um, let me see here. I did have also... Um, Someone donate some uh, Litecoin here, this one, and uh, I believe that was Tomcat. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And there's the QR code for for that if you want to send some. And then also Tomcat also sent me some Zcash, and I, and I appreciate that. And so there's the uh, QR code for for that. And so thank you everybody for doing that. So let me go focus back on Dogecoin. So what I wanted to do was um, one of the experiments I'm going to do with the Coinami wallet is see if I, I'm going to eventually send all this to paper wallets because this is a very light client, um, light client mobile wallet for the most part. And so for whatever reason, um, like I said, uh, I'm using this particular wallet let me see here. There you go. I'm using this particular wallet here, the Coinami for Android. That's the version. Um, I'm using this in particular for the giveaways, um, promotion. People like to give away their coins to promote their, their site or whatever. Um, maybe uh, also donations as well. And then what I'm going to do, uh, because it, um, because of the fact that it, it accepts a lot of coins, and most of these are probably a fork of Bitcoin. That's why they, uh, you know, you, you notice there's no Monero in here uh, because Monero is completely different. So there, there are probably some form of, of. A fork of Bitcoin, and and that's why I can use it. It's pretty familiar to use. I even got Aurora coin in here. My goodness. Anyways, there's a lot of coins in here. A lot of coins, and they're adding new coins all the time. Uh, recently, they have added. Let me see if I can find it. Should be in P. Okay, they've recently added uh, Pivx. Uh, this coin right there, Pivx. But you see, there's a lot of coins. So. Anyways, it's a multi. They even have testnet coins here. So if you're interested in testing all this, anyways, that's the reason I got. So I could have one wallet, and I can experiment with them. So in this particular test, I'm going to be testing Dogecoin, and I'm going to send this amount to a paper wallet. I'm going to generate a paper wallet here. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that and which which. Uh, paper wallet website or wallet generator I use uh, that I've been using and, I, and it's safe um, and what I've done is I've gone into settings here and I have changed the transaction fees to all zero and so as uh, I'm going to be testing that out and see if it will confirm and actually go through or if it will come back uh, one of the things I want to find out, um, some of the wallets won't allow you to set your transaction fee. Coinami does allow you to set your transaction fee. And let me see here. Um, this is the Doge. And you can see Doge transaction fees, and they're priced in per kilobyte. Uh, you can always set it back to the default, which would be one Doge. Okay. But... Uh, I want to change that to zero. Zero point zero 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 
so we got that. So, okay. So I'm going to see how long it takes and the process of doing it. Um, I think if I use Dogecoin, there's probably not an, a lot of network traffic. Uh, it probably will confirm in due time. I like to, that's one of the experiments that I'm working on. So um, let me cut in and cut out and uh, bear with me, okay? All right, everyone, I'm cutting back in here, and uh, this is the uh, block explorer for Dogecoin, uh, which um, I looked up the transaction, and you can see right here, that is the QR code from my Coinami. This is the address right here. That is the amount, and then there's the transaction there itself, and then there's the, the Shinu Ibu dog, and if you hover over it, it comes out. Very typical doge, you know, very cute. You can see that? So this is just one of many explorers. Uh, this is just the one I just looked in, up through a Google search. And then as I clicked on, um, as I clicked on the transaction itself, you can see this is what it comes out. So it looks like there were three inputs to make this one output. And um, let me see here. You can see more detail that, again, three inputs. That's the total input. That's the number of outputs. There's the fee right here. You can see the fee. And that's probably what uh, Brian was using in his Coinami wallet. And so there's the number of confirmations. So um, there's that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this site. Uh, WalletGenerator.net. Uh, that's what I've been using for paper wallets, and what I like about it is because it can make all these. Let me see here if I can show all of it. 129 supported currencies, um, and if you ever notice, there's only about three that are only worth any value, maybe four, if you include Dogecoin. So originally, this is just um, uh, if you just go here and you click Doge. You click any one of those, and it'll take you here. So it's a little Doge symbol. And let's just create a wallet. I'm not going to use this wallet. And if you notice, sometimes these little things, that's a super paper wallet, so paper wallet. And then it'll say uh, such a random. Um, that's there's nothing wrong with the website. That's just uh, again the Doge community or the Doge meme at work. See much design. When I first saw that, because you don't see that with any other uh, of the other wallets, um, even though it's the same generator website. Uh, it looks secret, secret, awesome, much crypto. So don't freak out. You haven't been hacked. Uh, so there, there is the, it generates a secret. I'm not going to use this wallet. I'm just showing you how to generate a paper wallet. So that it, this is your private key in which you would sweep your keys. And this is uncrypted. And then this is your uh, public key, which you would send to address. So this is how you, how you send your Dogecoin. And this is how you sweep your Dogecoin. And then, um, so that's just a regular way of... of um, So this is just the regular way of of, uh, of how you would generate just a normal single-use paper wallet, or you could use it again; doesn't matter. Um, just it says here specifically single wallet. So if you go here to paper wallet, it takes you to this site here, and this is how it looks. Okay. And again, it's it's just a regular uh, private key that you can sweep, and then there's the public where you send to. So this is where you can encrypt your paper wallet. And so you simply just click here to encrypt, and then you put a password in here. Let's say one two. One, two, three, four. Uh, this wallet is compromised. I'm not going to use it, though, so don't, please do not send anything to it. And what you do is you just, uh, 
trying to highlight it. There we go. And you could just simply just put that in right here. So you put the private key in here, okay, and we put it one, two, three, four. So let's apply it and take a take a look at the private key. Um, usually these Doge private keys starts with six. I like to see what it start out as. You'll notice that it's going to be different. So let's let's uh, let's take a look here. So it's thinking. Let's see how long it takes. This is all in real time, people. All right. Well, I, I don't know if you remember what it was, but now that you see it, um, it's probably, I think this is different. Matter of fact, here was the original private key, right here, you can see it. And now that you see this private key, it's different. So, anyways, there you go. And if you scan this right now uh, with your Coinami wallet, You'll probably need uh, the pass. It'll ask you for a passphrase, which this is the passphrase. Now, if you look at the private key, uh, this private key hasn't changed. It's still the same. So that's how you make a paper wallet. Uh, you can print it out. Um, I highly recommend not to do it on a computer that's connected to the internet. Uh, I've already downloaded through the GitHub uh, the wallet generator onto. Um, uh, a storage drive and from the storage drive I transferred it to a computer that's never touched the internet and from there the process is the same you just you just open up through a, a Chrome browser and then uh, you can generate wallets as much as you want so uh, but let's check out this uh, this uh, there we go uh, copy I'm gonna copy that and then from here, okay, from here, I'm going to go and see if I can do a search on it. Copy that address. And you see that address, it does show up here. There's nothing here. So uh, that's a way to confirm it. It exists. And so that's how you generate a, uh, a, a BIP 138 paper wallet. So that was just to show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut in and cut out. I'm going to generate my own. <laughs> okay, my I'm going to restart again. I'm probably uh, not going to do a paper wallet per se. I'm probably uh, or not a uh, encrypted wallet. I'm just probably going to use a a uh, uh, just single encryption or uh, just just one of these, just a single use. Um, I just doing it for testing. Just just make it really simple, not too complicated. So th this is how you would uh, uh, open a paper wallet. And what I do, what I normally do, is I don't print these out. I don't print these out. I just take a picture with my camera phone or my or my um, or a regular um, uh, your smartphone or um, a regular camera, digital camera, and then I store the picture onto a device. Uh, usually a micro SD card or something like that. So let me, let me cut and cut out, and I'll and I'll do the do the real test. But please do not use any of these. These are all compromised. Thank you. All right, I'm cutting back in here now, and uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to send it. And it's it's again it's it was donated by Brian McLaughlin. It's not a lot, so uh, thank you very much, Brian, for letting me experiment. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and check one more time at the settings. Make sure that the ex transaction fee is set to zero, which it is. Excellent. Okay. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and send all of this to the paper wallet and I did generate a paper wallet there is my paper wallet right here if you want to scan to verify or even donate uh, there it is right here so I generated a paper wallet like I showed you before but that this is a different paper wallet <laughs> because the other ones the ones I did were obviously compromised and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to simply uh, right here my doge see my balance is that much and I'm going to send and I'm going to let's see that's going to generate the camera function excellent There we go. Oh, it says ambiguous address. Please select the correct coin type. Wow, okay. This is interesting. Looks like it's coming up with several different uh, addresses here. I thought that would, it would be pretty obvious to what it was, but uh, interesting. Um, let me try something else again here. Uh, I have, uh, okay, so this is part of my paper wallet right here. I'm going to, I'm going to scan from that and see what happens if it comes up with the same. This is interesting. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and scan again. And I'm going to scan directly from the paper wallet. Again, it comes up with the same thing. So interesting. It actually has ambiguous addresses here. Hmm. All right. Well, I know it's Dogecoin, so I'm going to select the Doge because it's Doge. Balance. Okay. Yeah, it's a Doge. Doge. Send. And I'm going to send uh, all the funds. Well, um, I, I've set it to zero fees, but it says slightly less will be sent because of fees. Well, uh, okay. Um, well, let's see what happens. And yes, confirm. And there it is. It says received, and now I'm sending. And so, okay. Let's uh, let's take a look at this. Let's go ahead and just refresh it. And remember, I set it to zero fees. Let's see if there's anything going on. There's nothing pending. nothing going on okay looks like it's still thinking let me click on it see what it's doing there's the transaction ID we can view on the block header block it let's see what it what it does when I when I do this uh, let's use uh, Firefox here just this once Okay, there it is. Transaction details. It's saying its status is unconfirmed. Confidence is zero percent. Fee none. Okay. All right. Well, I'll cut in and I'll cut out and I will see. I will see how long it's going to take with zero fees on this. See if it does get confirmed. It does not even show. I might have to put this transaction ID um, in here. So let me cut out and cut in real quick. All right, I'm cutting back in, and I did notice something did a change. It says almost confirmed, which it didn't take too long. I was only off just just a little bit, just enough. I was putting in the transaction details here onto the search bar here, and oh, look at that! It it's confirmed.
it's confirmed already. So uh, zero transactions, zero transaction fee on Dogecoin. Okay. Okay. There's zero transaction. Let me refresh this. There it is. There it is. And I, yeah, there it is. Transaction set. Yep. No fees. I didn't put any fee into it. And there it is. It's in the block. There you go. Well, that was that was interesting. Okay. That was very very interesting. Uh, let's see. Let's have a look at the transaction real quick. That that is the correct transaction, from what I could tell. And this should give me a little bit more detail on it. Uh, number of inputs one, outputs one. That was exact amount that I want in. Exact amount I want out. Size. There's a size. There's a fee. Zero fee. Everyone. Zero fee. And then uh, three. It already has three confirmations. There it is. Okay, excellent. So, um, is there a use case for Dogecoin? Um, I, I think so. I think there is a use case for Dogecoin here. Let's see. Let's have a look here. Let's uh, let's just go back and verify it on here. Yep. Oh, there it is. It shows it being sent. I have a zero balance now. So, as far as Dogecoin goes, and uh, let's just give uh, Coinami its props here. Uh, I put zero fee into a Dogecoin transaction, and it went through relatively quickly, as you saw. Um, I did pause it for a while, but I only paused it for maybe a minute, maybe two minutes at most, and then I cut back in when I saw the status change from unconfirmed to uh, almost confirmed to being confirmed, as you saw. And it didn't take too long. It really did not take that long. And so there might be a use case for um, Dogecoin as for micro micro tipping, as you saw here. Uh, th that tells me a lot, though. It tells me that no, barely anybody's using this network. And uh, so this may be a use case for something like micro tipping. Anyways, uh, this concludes this episode. Uh, feel free to like, dislike, uh, leave a comment. Also do a video response until next time. Stay tuned. Bye.